I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Matt Duchesne of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. I'm Ryan Johansson of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sony. And before we get started on the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show. And once you've been educated about the show, you can click on that merchandise tab. It's going to take you straight to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts. And don't worry, all the special gimmicks that you've come to know and love from the Renegades of Puck all still totally available in our online store. Socks, wall art, throw pillows, bed sets, and so many other items. We've sold out so that you can buy in. Social media is of critical importance to this independent hockey operation, so we sure would appreciate some support on the following. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. That's how you can find us on social media. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, as many of you have. Thank you so much for all those new subscribers on YouTube for Renegades of Puck TV. You can also find us on Twitch. That's our behind-the-scenes streaming channel. And, of course, the audio podcast is available on numerous platforms. Search Renegades of Puck on your preferred platform or just check out one of the examples that I'm going to give you here. Spotify. And also, we are on Stitcher. We are on Google. We're on Amazon and several others. So many that I have difficulty recalling how many platforms that we are actually on. But thanks to the Full Press NHL Network, we are getting on more and more platforms all the time and getting heard by more and more renegades all the time. So stay cast love and respect to everybody who's been checking out the show as of late. Venmo is how you can become a sponsor and partner of the show. Just go to Venmo and search Renegades a Buck or scan the QR code that's currently on your screen. Thanks to generous renegades just like you, we have been able to make significant upgrades. We've been able to plan and execute significant events. And now the hockey club is coming along nicely and we've got some things coming up with that soon so thanks any donation you can make even a dollar goes along with helping the renegades of puck hey contribute to the renegades of puck hockey club beer fund that is something that believe me we could use a little bit of assistance with be sure to appreciate each and every one of you out there for checking it out now listen i know it's time to deliver the no half step in hockey coverage so let me get to the goods time for operation number 736 that's right operation number 736 for the renegades of puck and at this point, we did hockey history. I'm going to get another mixed drink, too. The National Predators currently find themselves in fifth place in the Central Division. They've skated in 72 games this season. That means they have 10 games left. 36, 28, and 8 is their record. 80 points overall in the season. On the road, which when that National Predators next game will take place, the record of 18, 4, and 4. They have scored 204 goals, and they have given up 216. They have a goal differential of minus 12. Now, for the Predators, once they wrap up this game against the Boston Bruins, Thursday they'll be in Pittsburgh, Saturday back home against St. Louis, Monday in Dallas, April the 4th versus Vegas at Bridgestone Arena, and then April the 6th versus the Carolina Hurricanes, also at Bridgestone Arena. Season series between these two teams, of course, back on, it was Valentine's Day, February the 16th, the year 2023, when the National Predators fell 5 0 to the Boston Bruins. It was the night that we saw a catfish too far happen. The Bruins had five different goal scores. Swayman went 28 out of 28 and got the shot. UC Saros took loss, only going 25 out of 30. Now, we need to update the injuries list for the National Predators before we move on and talk about this next matchup. Add Matt Duchesne's list to name to the list now. Week to week with an injury. He saw it during the game. He was hit by a shot at close range right around the crease area, and he absolutely left immediately in incredible pain holding his arm. Matt Duchesne now week to week, we learned, after the game. The captain, Romeo C, is still listed as day-to-day. Parsonen and Carrier, the same. Forsberg is on injured reserve. Johansson's out for the rest of the season. There are others, but the list has gotten quite extensive. The Boston Bruins. Now, on the season, if you have not been tracking anything going on in the Eastern Conference, some of these numbers might seem quite shocking to you. If you have been tracking what's going on in the Eastern Conference, well, then you're not going to be surprised one bit. The Bruins are 57, 11, and 5 on the season. They have 119 points. They are of course first in the Atlantic division this home record though is what really really jumps off the page 33 and 3 30 wins three losses three overtime and shootout losses so for the Bruins they have one of the most incredible records in all of hockey they have the most points Uh, they have 118 goal differential in the positive side which is of course number one overall in the NHL the Boston Bruins have been the titans of the league this entire season and there's no doubt they are priming themselves for a deep run settled settled into that number one spot in the Atlantic division we'll see how they handle the national purpose coming to town let's go back and take a look at the Boston Bruins last five games in this sample size it was back 
back on March 19th. It was a 7-0 victory at Buffalo. And then on the 21st, following up a 2-1 win versus Ottawa. And then on the 23rd, a 4-2 win versus Montreal. On the 25th, a 2-1 win versus Tampa Bay. And on the 26th, a 4-3 shootout win at Carolina. So as you can see, this team is a juggernaut, and they have continued, even after clinching their playoff spot, to play considerably, tremendously good hockey. Let's take a look inside the rankings and the numbers between these two teams, and it is not even close in any of the statistical metrics. The Boston Bruins are top 10 in almost everything. The Nashville Purs are in the 20s in almost everything, except for one category on each side. Which are they? That's the intrigue. Let's get to it when it comes to goals for the Boston Bruins are scoring 3.73 goals per game on the season that is second best in the entire NHL while the National Bears are generating 2.76 goals per game that's 27th in the league the Boston Bruins in goals against 2.11 per game that is first that goal differential is absolutely insane plus 118 you can see why 3.73 for 2.11 against the season. National Purse, 2.97 against a respectable number that has them at 12th in the NHL. In the shots for category, 32.8 is ninth best for the Boston Bruins in the entire league. While the Nashville Purs are generating 29.8 shots per game, that is 24th overall in the NHL. In the shots against category, Boston again in a top 10 metric here, 29.8 shots against per game, that's eighth best in the league. While the Nashville Purs are giving up 33.3 shots per game, that is 27th overall in the NHL. When it comes to the power play, the Preds power play has been, well, frankly, unacceptable all season long. 17.8% is their conversion rate for the season, 26th overall in the league 39 conversions on 219 opportunities now on the other side of things the Bruins 22 percent conversion rate that's about good for 12th best in the league 55 out of 250 opportunities on the season when it comes to the penalty kill yes the National Purs have a very respectable penalty kill and a very very good penalty kill since the all-star break 81.3 percent overall in the season 11th best in the NHL for the season 45 power play goals Against, but then I flip over to the Boston Bruins side of the ledge when I see 85.9% kill rate, 35 power play goals against. This is first overall in the NHL. So for the Nashville Predators, it's going to be an incredibly difficult matchup going into the Boston Bruins. Yet to score a goal against the Bruins this year, they'll have one more game and 60 minutes, maybe more, to get it done against the Bruins. Let's take a look at the individual stats when it comes to these two teams. And again, highly impressive numbers on the home team side. So let's talk about the Boston Bruins. Posture. 51 goals on the season, 46, 6, 97 points. I'm going to just pause for just a second and say, Pasternak does get a lot of talk. He does get a lot of headlines. Of course, he's in Dunkin' Donuts commercials. He's been featured a lot in the league the last couple of years, and the Bruins have been one of the best teams in the leagues. But even still, Pasternak getting over 50 goals, I feel like it barely got a mention across the headline. So Pasternak deserves all the talk that he gets, all of the credit that he gets. 51 goals now on the season. It's a highly impressive number, and he's at 97 points, so he's going to obviously eclipse 100 points on the season. Marshawn, 20 goals, 43 assists for 63 points. Bergeron, 27 goals and 30 assists for 57 points. Krejci, 16 and 9, 39 for 55. And Palazaka, 18 and 31 for 49 points. In that, Linus Olmark, 36, 5 and 1, a 9, 37 save percentage, a 1.92 two goals against average potential Vezina finalists meeting up against each other in this matchup but there's no doubt the Boston Bruins netminder is going to win uh, the Vezina this season just clearly running away with it much like Igor Shosturkin did uh, recently UC Soros since we're talking about the Vezina we're talking about goaltending numbers UC Soros very very good strong numbers for a team that's in fifth place and outside the playoff window UC Soros has 28 victories on the season 20 and 7 is the rest of his record 915 save percentage 2.80 goals against average when it comes to the rest of the scores for the national person individual statistics the captain Roman Yossi still leads the team in scoring but unfortunately is still out of the lineup his 18 goals and 41 assists 41 is top on the Preds equal 59 points Matt Duchesne Leading scorer on the National Purs in goals with 22 at 34 assists and 56 points. Now also out of the lineup and week to week with 10 games to go means, well, Matt Duchesne is done. Uh, when it comes to Forsberg, also out of the lineup. 19 goals, 23 assists, 42 points. Tommy Novak, 14 and 20 for 34. Glass at 11 and 17 for 28. That makes up your top five scores for the National Purs. I've given you the goaltending numbers. I've given you the matchups, the rankings between these two teams. The injury update, the season series. Told you how the Bruins are doing. I've even given you the standings. The one thing I forgot to do, though, before we close out the preview segment, I forgot to update you on the wild card. And that's... Because the wild card race is not going to be very important to this show uh, the rest of the way. The Nashville Predators are fading. They are doing it in a competitive way. They are not just dropping off of a cliff. But the Nashville Predators are 
fading at this point. Seattle holds the number one wild card spot. Winnipeg holds the number two wild card spot. 88 points at one, 85 points at two. Calgary, the first team outside the window looking in with 81 points, and then Nashville at 80 points. So the Preds made up one of those three games at hand, finally against the Winnipeg Jets. So Winnipeg still has played two more games than the Nashville Predators, but now the Nashville Predators cannot overcome the point differential just by games at hand. And I do feel that after this Boston Bruins game and after this brief road trip, that the Nashville Predators will gradually slide out of the conversation for this final wild card spot. And it is basically Calgary and Winnipeg that are going to be fighting it out for the final 10 games of the season. So that's got you all set up for the Nashville Predators next game against the Boston Bruins. But we got to go back. We got to review the last game for the Nashville Predators. It took place on home ice. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We go all the way back to March 26th of the year 2023. The National Purs were taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs at Bridgestone Arena on a Sunday early evening game. Tomasino Glass and Duchesne McAbee were first line. Sherwood Novak and Evangelista, Trenton Sissons and Smith, Afanasev, Jankowski and Asplin make up your fourth line. McDonough and Favreau, Barry and Gross, Luzon and Foot make up your defensive pairings. And Kevin Lankinen gets the start in net on the second day of back-to-backs on the ice with the Maple Leafs more 50 seven seconds in and it is Wall coming up with a save on Barry first shot on goal of the game for either of the teams at 244 the first Wall comes up with a save on McDonough 334 Wall save on Barry 450 Wall save on Evangelista Nashville Predators just dominating the first five minutes of this game on home ice at 529 Lankinen's first touch of the game comes as he makes a save on Giordano the shots on goal at this point are 9-1 to one after 529 of the first period in favor of the Nashville Predators 642. Wall comes up with a save on Glass. 1239. Lankin comes up with a save on Achari. 1401. Fabro hits the post. An absolute laser from out high. 1447. Lankin comes up with a save on Reese. 1718. Trenton's off to the box. First penalty of the game. Two minutes for tripping. It's going to be Lankin coming up with a save on Nylander. But then Tavares is going to cash in for the Leafs. His 31st goal of the season gives Toronto a 1 0 lead. It was just strong puck movement. I believe all five players touched the puck before the finish, and it led to the finish in the low slot area. Again, significantly quick, accurate puck movement. These players absolutely knew where they were going to be. one nothing here at the end of the first period. Nashville is out shooting Toronto 12-10. to Now the Nashville person only had one shot on goal in the first period in the previous game at home, so this is an improvement. We go to the second period. We're 102 in and on the clean sheet. Kerfoot's ninth goal of the season, though. It's bar down, wrist shot off of the rush. Gives Toronto Maple Leafs a 2 nothing lead here early in the first period. 143 of the second. Hall comes over the say calls off the box. Two minutes it's for high sticking. Duchesne is hit by a heavy shot in the hand area at this time. He left the game. He did not return very early in the second period to lose one of your most, most reliable offensive threats. 714 of the second period. Jankowski's off the box. Two minutes for slashing. Zero shots on goal. The National Purse strong PK yet again. 1032 of the second period. Lankin comes up with the save on Wayne Simmons. 1049. Those Simmons off to the box. Two minutes for interference. We would have a nice scrum on this situation. What would come with the save on Evangelista and the Preds' second unit would come up with some incredibly strong pressure, buzzing all over the zone, but unfortunately, the finish was what they were lacking in this particular situation. 1304 of the second period. Often save hits the post, second post for the Nashville Purrs in this game. 1417 of the second. Asplund off the box. Two minutes for tripping a bit of a dive on this particular play. Player went down awfully easy. Lankin comes with a save on Matthews. Then Lankin follows it up with another save on Matthews. He'd have to make one more save before the end of the PK. 18-23 of the second period. Lankin, a five-star club save on Kelly Yarncroke. Kelly Yarncroke having a hell of a season for the Maple Leafs. It was a feed from Matthews that just set him up perfectly, but Lankinen robs him right there in the blue paint. We go to the end of the second period. Toronto out shooting Nashville 20 to 16 into the third period. 212 in. Thomasino off the box. Two minutes for slashing. Lankinen comes up with a save on Riley. Lankinen also comes up with a save on Bunting. Nashville Purves able to survive at 422 of the third period. McCabe is off to the box. Two minutes for slashing. 
Sissons was stopped by Wall on the continuation. Nashville Purs almost, almost come away with a goal right here. Wall comes with a save on Novak during the power play. That would be it for the Nashville Purs. At 12.27 of the third period, Tavares off to the box. Two minutes for interference. And this is where Glass is going to convert for the Nashville Purs. His 11th goal of the season gets the Preds on the board. It was a deflection of Barry's long shot from out high. Plenty of traffic. Glass finds it through the traffic. Nashville Purs, their first goal of the game. Toronto now leads 2-1 to one in the third period. 14-16 of the third. Foots off to the box. Two minutes for slashing. And Tavares is cashing in with his 32nd goal of the season. Giving the Maple Leafs a 3-1 lead. We go to 15-29. And Wall comes up with a save on Sherwood at 18-18. With a 6-on-5 attack. The Nashville Predators are managed to cut the lead in half. Barry's 13th goal of the season. It's a heavy shot that deflects off of bodies in front. Goes into the net. The Nashville Purs now down 3-2. to two With over a minute to go in the 6-on-5 situation. The Preds would generate plenty of pressure over the final minute with the 6-on-5 attack, but they would not be able to get one into the net or over the goal line. The Toronto Maple Leafs hang on and survive 3-2 to two over the Nashville Predators. They outshoot the Preds 34-25, to 25. so another game where the Preds are unable to generate a significant amount of shots in the third period. Only five shots on goal for the Predators in this here third period, but they did score two goals. They did get themselves back in the game with the 6-on-5 attack. They had opportunities right there in the final seconds of this game to tie it up. So for the Nashville Purs, they put up a fight. They put up an effort. Ultimately, the better team, the Toronto Maple Leafs, won this game. And for the Nashville Purs, again, slowly sliding out, but doing it in a competitive way and getting important minutes for all of the youth and all of the young players that are expected to move forward. The Matt Duchesne thing is just, that's that's the cherry. That's the cherry on the top of the amount of injuries that the Nashville Purs have been dealing with in the last couple of weeks. And without a doubt, is the end of the pursuit of a potential first round playoff series for this Nashville Purs team. That was the Rebirth Sports full game recap. I've been told Sean C. Smith is on the front lines with an impressive investigation into all of the ice cream options being found on the option on a late Sunday afternoon. We'll get to Sean in just a couple of minutes. We've got some analysis coming up after the break and then Sean and then the box score and then we'll wrap this particular episode of Renegades Puck Podcast up back here in just a moment. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy owner operator of Strong Style Fitness. And that's me and my training assistant Rizzo. And we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar inspired classes, to bottle workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been what you were going through, and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. Lankin was 31 out of 34 in this game. That five-star glove save, truly something that's going to end up on the season-ending highlight reel. Probably should end up on perhaps saves of the week on NHL Network. It was a five-star glove save on Kelly Arncroft. You know what? Lankin didn't have a bad game overall. His last game at New Madison Square Garden against the Rangers was one of the worst things we've seen all season long. This was this was not bad. This was Lankin and kept the Preds in this one uh, until the third period. I thought that he played a decent overall game. Not a bad game at all and the five-star glove save certainly is uh, something you can look to and point to and say wow he was he was dialed in at that moment for sure but for Lankinen going up against the Leafs on home ice with a depleted Nashville Predators team that's a tough tough game to win but Lankinen did his job he kept his team in it at least until the end. Got to talk about Barry. Normally, I start with forwards, but I wanted to start on the D. Barry, uh, one goal, one assist, two points. Uh, the one goal is the mo- tied for the most for the Preds. The one assist tied for the most for the Preds. Uh, and the six shots on goal is the most for the Preds in this game. Also at 20-30 in total time on ice. And again, I made the comments on the last episode, and I think I'm going to start making these comments every time I, I talk about Tyson Barry. Uh, it's that it seemed like he was just a throw-in with the Matias Ekholm deal and was going to be 
perhaps flipped and moved for more assets, more draft picks, more whatever. But Tyson Berry, since coming in, has just really, really assimilated into the lineup uh, so smoothly and is such a big help. Barry and McDonough being a part of this defense core going forward into next season is one of the more positive things that Nashville Predators fans can be pointing to and looking at. Barry was incredibly smooth. He was incredibly noticeable. And when the Preds were having difficulty generating offense from the, the middle of the first period all the way through to the third period, it was Barry who was consistently the one who was helping get the pucks towards the net. So again, another really, really good tremendous game for Tyson Berry as a Nashville Perna. I think a lot of Preds fans are very much warming up to the fact that uh, he is going to be a part of this team moving forward. Glass picked up a goal for the Nashville Perna in this game. Also had four shots on goal. Again, more world-class hand-eye coordination around the net area. He is really good and really strong at going to the net. So now, Glass has 11 goals on the season and 28 points, and he makes an impact every opportunity that he's out there. He is making an opportunity. He's really, really beginning to develop into a full-time, reliable NHL player. That's just wonderful to watch. Tommy Novak is very much in the same kind of conversation. One assist in this game. Tommy Novak now on the season has 34 points. That was his 20th assist for the Nashville Purves. He's fourth fourth on the Nashville Purves in assists on the season and by no means has he been anywhere near played a full season with the Nashville Purves. Tommy Novak is a wonderfully reliable and steady player out there on the ice and again another player that I just enjoying watching the development and that's mostly what I'm going to focus on over the final 10 games of the season their development and then what it is that they'll be able to do if they get their opportunities in Milwaukee with the Admirals who are about to make their next playoff run we have to talk about Matt Duchesne when I was writing the show I said that the injury looked real bad that was just my impressions on the fact that Duchesne left the game injured and the way he was holding his arm I would come to learn shortly after writing the show though that Matt Duchesne was out week to week and I've got to be honest with you the pursuit of a final playoff spot the pursuit of a wild card spot with Duchesne with Forsberg with Yossi all out of the lineup with all of the players that have left due to trades uh, this Nashville Predators team is slowly slowly sliding towards the finish line and they are slowly sliding out of contention when it comes to any possibility for the wild card yes the Matt Duchesne injury is that big week to week he had 22 goals in the season at 56 points he was your leader in goals. He was second on the team in points. So your top three scorers right now on the Nashville Purves are all out injured. And it's been so hard for the Preds to generate shots on goal without Roman Yossi in the lineup and without Philip Forsberg in the lineup. And Matt Duchesne is another prolific, prolific offensive player that puts shots on net. He shoots the puck from everywhere. And for the Nashville Purves, they are just struggling to put pucks on the net as of late, now falling under 30 per game for the season. So the Duchesne injury, it not only looked bad, it is bad. Week to week, hope he recovers well, just like Ryan Johansson and the rest of the Nashville Purves that are out of the lineup. Now, we need to talk to Sean C. Smith. Sean C. Smith was on the front lines at Bridgestone Arena for this game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. I know he's going to talk a little bit of hockey, but I believe he's going to be doing a review of ice cream. Sean, is that what you're doing today? I don't blame you. From A to Z Sports, he is the one and only Sean C. Smith. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, Renegades, it's Sean Smith. We're going to talk about the Preds' loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, first things first. Bridgestone's getting a little bit out of hand with the opposing team's fans. They were all over Bridgestone tonight. Very loud. Got a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, <clears throat> not great in there. But let's let's say this. The, the team lost. And it's disappointing. It's disappointing for a variety of reasons. And one of the biggest reasons is the Predators somehow are still in this playoff race. And, and let me explain is that they're, they're just five points behind the Jets. And the thing is... <sighs> You see, the Jets have played more games than the Predators. The Preds have games in hand, and, and realistically, if the Preds can win a few games here and kind of make up some ground, then they're, they're right in the hunt. And the Jets, as much as they're playing a much weaker schedule, they don't seem super motivated to win. It's, it's very bizarre, but, but here's the thing. Unfortunately, you know, the Predators played against the Maple Leafs tonight, and, and they are uh, the, the sixth best team at the time in the NHL. And, of course, the next team they play is the Boston Bruins, which happen to be the best team in the NHL. 
The Jets, in that same time frame, play one game against the lowly San Jose Sharks. Yes, it's the West Side Story game. As the Jets face the Sharks, there will probably be a lot less snapping than you'd like and probably a lot more bad hockey on the side of the Sharks. But that's what we mean when we say that they have a much easier schedule. The Predators are facing top-tier teams. The Jets are facing... I don't know. I wouldn't even... Are the Sharks even trying? I mean, they want to be last in the league, right? They want a chance at Connor Bedard. I assume they're not going to pull out all the stops to try to beat the the Jets. Either way. Either way. And, and then again, at the same time, <clears throat> the Boston Bruins. I mean, they've pretty much got this thing wrapped up. How big of a how big of an effort do they want to put out against the Preds? Maybe the Preds can pick up some points there. And that's that's what you've got to remember headed down this stretch, is that it's not necessarily as simple as it seems. Until the Preds are statistically eliminated from making the playoffs, I think they're going to continue to fight. And fight's what I really want to talk about. And I don't mean punching. I mean playing your tail off every game. And that's you can be upset about the team losing. You can be upset about all the injuries. You can be upset about the fact that the team is, is, is this close to the playoffs and they're not getting the wins. What you, what you can't be upset about is the way these young guys are playing. You've got guys playing in the NHL right now that have been AHL players for the majority of their career. They're getting opportunities to play not just in the NHL, but to play a lot of minutes in the NHL against top-level teams in the NHL. If these guys are going to make an argument for continuing their career at the NHL level, this is their chance to make it. And you're seeing those guys put everything on the line. You can't tell me that Kiefer Sherwood hasn't played and given everything he has to give on the ice out there. He knows he's playing for his next season. And it's it's impressive to watch. And at the same time, you're getting to see a lot of guys that you'd only heard about before playing down in Milwaukee, the, the Luke Evangelistas and the Igor Afanasyevs of the world. And that's that's exciting. So a lot of people with the Duchesne news, Duchesne, of course, week to week with an upper body injury, looks like he stopped the puck with his hand. Um, not good. And there's only a couple, it's only week to week for the season too. So uh, that's all that's left is week to week. So Duchesne more than likely, probably not going to come back. The reality here is that as much as this team keeps getting knocked down, they keep getting back up. They didn't hear no bell and they keep going back and fighting. And that's what you want to see out of this team right now. Yes, who knows what it means for the rest of the season. Most of the team's players that started the season with the Preds are no longer on the team or are injured. And that's that's not what you want. But we'll say this. Let them fight for the rest of the season. Let some guys make their case. Let them earn a spot on the team. Then everybody's going to get healthy in the offseason. Then we'll see what happens in the offseason with Barry Trotz as the uh, general manager, and maybe they can come back a lot stronger. Maybe they're going to skip some of those years of being down in the doldrums, and that's that's what you don't want. Is you don't want to be the San Jose Sharks. My God, who would want to be in that position right now? Would you like to be a Sharks fan, cheering and and hoping for your ten percent chance at the number one overall pick? What a crappy way to live your life as a fan, just sitting there just hoping your team loses and sucks their way to the bottom so they can maybe have a 1 in 10 chance at a uh, you know trajectory altering player which is just a 1 in 10 chance you, you almost have better you have better odds shooting dice man come on anyway that's about that's about all I got Charlie I do want to say one more thing if you were at Bridgestone either of the last two nights of hockey there was a very, very special opportunity that you may have missed, and, and hopefully it's not going away. But they've had some blackberry ice cream, it's purple for Hockey Fights Cancer, available behind section 107 at the Dippin' Dot stand, and I'm going to tell you that it is out of this world heavenly. Hopefully I've convinced everybody to go out and try it. Hopefully Sean Henry, the president of the team, had it and uh, understands that it needs to be made a permanent part of the Predators' uh, offerings on a nightly basis but let me tell you if you didn't get any not only you're missing out but you're doing yourself a disservice if it's still there the next time the preds play i strongly recommend you go by and get it and hopefully if you're out there hearing this you believe me oh and by the way renegades so nice to see so many of you 
out at the home base freakout too the other night. Tailgate Brewery. Had a great time talking to everybody. Hopefully I got up on stage and, and entertained you and didn't make a fool of myself. But it was nice to see everybody. And it's so nice to actually see the people who, who I'm talking to when I say, hey, Renegades. And I think that's I think that's awesome to be a part of this community where you guys all can kind of come together uh, around hockey. And uh, it, it's really cool. So thank you, everybody, for coming out. Those of you who couldn't make it, Hopefully you make it to the next one. Hopefully there's going to be a home base freakout three coming up at some point, but you're going to have to talk to Crazy Charlie about that. Renegades, that's all I got. Charlie, I'm going to send it back over to you. The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the Renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. You know, when it comes to the box score, there's not a whole lot to talk about, but we do talk about it. Glass with a goal in this game. Barry with a goal in this game. That is it for the goals category for the Nashville Predators. When it comes to the assist side of thing, Tommy Novak, Tomasino, and also Barry pick up assists in this game. So again, Tomasino continues doing quite well out there. Also had some other plays in this game where he showed some good high hockey IQ, some good hands, some good speed, and a lot of good situational awareness. So Tomasino continues his development as well. In these shots, on goal category. Barry led the team with six, but a trio of Nashville Predators forwards had four, and it was Sherwood. It was also Glass and Evangelista. So again, the youth is starting to progress and develop quite nicely out there. Four shots on goal was second overall in team, and three of the young players had those shots. Block shots. It was Sherwood leading the Nashville Predators with three. McDonough follows up second with two. And when it comes to the physical element of the game in hits, it was Sherwood with five. It was also Trennan with five, and you saw Luzon add four to that. So, again, another game where Sherwood impressive four shots, three block shots, five hits, 1757 total time on ice. Sherwood just outside the normal analysis bracket, but he definitely deserves some mentions for what he was able to accomplish yet again in this game. Really good back to back weekend for Sherwood overall. Uh, when it comes to time on ice leaders, unfortunately, the least amount of time skated by any national per was. Matt Duchesne, not due to his performance, but due to injury, 752 in total time on ice. The least amount skated out of players that did complete the game was Asplund at 802. The most out of the forwards, 1828, belongs to Tommy Novak. Tommy Novak also got 429 in total power play time on ice. That would lead the Nashville Purs for the game. When it comes to the defenseman and overall lead in time on ice, 21-33 by McDonough. That's going to be your leader, 6-0-4 in shorthanded time on ice. Now, Lankinen, 31 out of 34. He took a loss, but again, thought he looked reasonable, thought he looked respectable, and thought he kept his team in this game. That's going to do it for the box score. We'll be right back after this short message to go ahead and close out the show. I'm Crazy Charlie Sonia, captain of the Renegades of Puck. I'm also tired of the cold, tired of the dark, and tired of being landlocked. I'm also willing to bet that I'm not the only one who could use some sun, fun, and time in paradise with friends. That's exactly why I called our great friend Pete Weber. He told me, call ships and trips travel, and now we're all going to Mexico. That's right, Renegades of Puck, July 15th to the 20th of 2023. Dreams Vallarta Resort in Puerto Vallarta is the destination to hang with Pete Weber in paradise. To join Pete and the Renegades of Puck in Puerto Vallarta, go to www.shipsandtripstravel.com. That's ships and trips travel.com and just click on the ROP on vacation tab. Don't stay landlocked. Join the Renegades of Puck in Paradise July 15th to the 20th, 2023 in Porto Vallarta. Pete Weber, the Renegades of Puck and you. It's time to ditch those skates for flip-flops and fun in the sun. 10 games to go in the season for the Nashville Predators and it has just absolutely flown by, at least for me here in the bunker day-to-day. 
being as involved and immersed as I am, it is easy to see how the season just comes and it goes as quickly as it does. It seems to do this to me every year. I've been doing this for so many years now. But we're 10 games to go in the season for the National Prayers. They are slowly sliding out of relevancy when it comes to the wild card playoff race. And that is 100% okay. The National Prayers' most important focus after the trade deadline was to get the young players the amount of minutes that they needed at this level to get them prepared for the most important development and training camp in Nashville Predators franchise history, at least since the original one 25 years ago. So for the Preds, Remaining competitive, remaining in these games, of course, that is important because you want these young players to be in important situations now. Playing a game at MSG, getting starstruck, starstruck looking around at the rafters and losing by seven, well, that's a lesson that you can learn so that we don't have to go through that again in the future. But for the National Players, these young players, they're learning incredibly good lessons, valuable lessons. They're getting very important ice time, and it is great to see. And that's what the National Players need to focus on. So they need to do over the final 10 games of the season. Don't forget the Milwaukee Admirals are well-primed to make a run in the AHL playoffs this season. That's coming up here in just a couple of weeks. So for the Preds, continue playing, continue playing hard, continue doing the best that you can out there. And the results, frankly, don't matter. As long as the games remain competitive, as long as the young players continue putting up stats, continue filling up the box score and continue getting those incredibly value minutes, then these last 30 games of the season and now this final 10 games of the season uh, will truly be one of the most important building blocks for this franchise moving forward for the next seven Several years. The entire cycle has been reset in season due to a GM change, the amount of trades, and now the amount of youth that is getting minutes each and every night at the NHL level. For the Preds, just continue doing what you're doing. Don't concern yourself with the results of the standings. Just keep playing good hockey. Talking about playing some better hockey, the Renegades Puck Hockey Club. Quick update. First of all, I got my bell rung on an open ice hit last night. That's what I get for skating with my head down through the neutral zone. Perfectly clean hit. As a matter of fact, I don't even think it was intended to be a hit. But with my head down, my inability to see the shoulder coming into my sternum area, uh, I went ahead and took one for the team in that particular situation. Stayed in the game, played good overall out there on D. I continue uh, evolving as a defenseman. I continue trying to move the puck. Mostly last night, due to a hamstring injury, I was um, staying back a little bit focusing on my defensive positioning my awareness stick in the lane making sure I was doing all of the little things that you need to do as a defenseman as we get ready for league play overall it was a scrimmage it was a practice but I got to tell you the Renegades Buck put some nice pucks in the net Kyle Woodall last night had some great chemistry and we also had a couple of reserves come out and help us out we had Alex Daughtry we had Chris Martell and we had Gumpy in the lineup last night so it was great to have all those fellows out there filling in with us uh, doing a little bit of extra skating this week it was great to see those guys out there it was great to see the whole squad and how much they've improved in just a few weeks. We'll have so much more on the Renegades Puck Hockey Club coming up here. I got some pictures I'll be posting on social media all throughout Monday. We tried to take a couple of pictures, but everybody was so exhausted. Uh, we'll have to see how they turned out. We've also still have some video to go through from Home Base Freakout 2, and you know we'll, we'll probably be revealing moments and pictures and videos from Home Base Freakout 2 for the next several episodes as they uh, come trickling in from people that were in attendance that night. So sure to appreciate each and every one of you. Operation number 736 is in the books. Renegades Puck back in the trenches after the Boston game. Ten games to go on the season. Renegades Puck, you can count on us. We'll be in the trenches for each and every one of those. Then we are officially going to be converting over to Milwaukee Admirals and AHL playoff coverage full time. That way we will be able to update you on what's going on with the Nashville Predators as they start to look towards their rebuild. And we'll be able to keep you up to date on everything going on with the Milwaukee Admirals as they look to make their run towards the Calder Cup. That's going to do it for this episode. I am your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonye. Stick taps, love, and respect.